Welcome to History 111, Lecture 39, Lincoln as President. So most people in Washington, D.C. thought Lincoln was a bit of a backwards hick, and he assembled a wartime cabinet that tried to represent all factions of the Republican Party, but most of them were arrogant and really thought that they should have been president, not this man. Now Lincoln in office is going to tend to ignore the Constitution, because he decided the conflict was a domestic insurrection, and therefore he did not need to consult Congress about many decisions relating to the war, and he's going to go ahead and do things like increase the size of the army on his own authority at times. So Lincoln is also going to do things like order widespread arrests of people that opposed the war or who he thought were disloyal, and he's going to hold about 13,000 people without trial or tr have them tried by military courts. He's even going to go so far as to deport a congressman who made a inflammatory speech about the war. Now, he's also going to ignore various Supreme Court rulings that require him to free various disloyal subjects and suspend a lot of other legal rights. And in Lincoln's mind, what he's looking at is he's saying this is a a serious insurrection and that civil rights are a liberty that he simply can't afford so he goes ahead and decides of his own authority that he's gonna go set all those civil rights aside for the duration of this conflict now the actions Lincoln took caused a lot of resentment towards him and he faces major opposition in the 1864 election and the main opponent he comes up against is McClellan and McClellan had been a popular Union general that Lincoln fired for as Lincoln put it having a case of the slows and we'll talk about why exactly that is in a different lecture but many believe that McClellan could have won the war if Lincoln had only given the reinforcements he wanted now McClellan's supporters who are mostly northern Democrats want a truce and a settlement although McClellan McClellan himself did not, and that really divides his party. But the serious challenge really wasn't about McClellan having a better alternative or a better vision for the country. It was about the deep dissatisfaction with Lincoln and the war weariness in general. And do keep in mind that even the Republican Party was split over his leadership and he faced an internal challenge from Fremont. Now, what really saves Lincoln and really brings about his re-election is Sherman's capture of Atlanta. That hands Lincoln the victory in the race because the capture of Atlanta is seen by many as another step towards bringing the war to an end. So people are seeing light at the end of the tunnel and that this is a winnable war now. And that spirit of and that light and feeling is going to bring Lincoln across the finish line of that election. While Lincoln is not afraid to dispense with civil rights during the war, he does take a very cautious view on slavery at first, and most actions concerning slavery are taken by Republicans in Congress. The Confiscation Act of 1861 declares slaves who were used for insurrectionary purposes would be considered free. They also go ahead and abolish slavery in Washington, D.C. and the Western Territories in 1862, with the owners being compensated. The Second Confiscation Act declares that free that all slaves owned by those aiding or participating in the Confederate war effort and authorizes the president to raise military units made up of ex-slaves. It's not until 1863 that Lincoln takes any direct action against slavery himself, because remember, most of what's happening is happening in Congress. Now, Lincoln is going to go ahead and use the war powers to issue the Emancipation Proclamation, which is an order freeing all slaves in Confederate territory. Now, that's going to exclude the four slave states with, that are in the Union, as well as Tennessee, Western Virginia, and Southern Louisiana, which are all under Union occupation. But it's going to shift the war from one to keep the Union together to one against slavery. And this is a really symbolic act. When you think about it, Lincoln is freeing the slaves in Confederate territory, an area in which he has no power to enforce his order. But importantly, by saying it's now a war against slavery, this takes away a lot of support for the Confederate states by European powers, some of which were considering aiding them. Now also, there is a general trend within the country to go ahead and move further from slavery. Again, Congress is taking action, and a lot of states are voluntarily abolishing slavery before the end of the war. Maryland and Missouri both go ahead and decide to get rid of it on their own. Union occupied Tennessee, Louisiana, and Arkansas do the same thing. West Virginia splits off from the other Virginia and goes ahead and enters the Union as a free state in 1863. So even within the context of the United States, those slaveholding territories that were occupied by the Union, they're all going to go ahead and get rid of it on their own. Now, in addition to cutting off support abroad for the Confederate States, the Emancipation Proclamation also led to a significant boom in the number of African American soldiers they were able to recruit. And there was about a total of 186,000 during the war, some of which were organized into fighting units that were led by mass by white officers, and the 54th Massachusetts is by far the most famous, although more than half of that unit died in combat in a single battle. However, most of the soldiers were 
put into menial support or labor tasks, they tend to be paid about one-third of what white soldiers were. And more importantly, whenever captured, the Confederate states tend to execute these black soldiers rather than send them into, P into captivity. They didn't consider them POWs, and if they didn't execute them, they sent them back to their masters. So what's the big idea? Well, first and foremost, Lincoln really suspends a lot of civil rights, and he does so because he believes it's necessary to win the war. Now, Lincoln's also cautious on slavery in the beginning, and most of what's happening is Congress and individual states. But when Lincoln does take a step, he takes a big and very bold step and issues the Emancipation Proclamation, which signals really an end to slavery within the United States. See you in the next lecture.